Welcome, my friends, to a new episode of Connect Your Speech. Well, in this episode, we're going to talk about a new feature of um, Connected Speech. We're going to talk about delayed explosion. Right. So, again, when we say delayed explosion, let's think about these two words here. And let me start with the second one. Let me start with explosion. Oh, my God. Right. Okay. Good. Right. So, um, plosion. This. And plosion, as we heard, is a kind of explosion. Right. And when we say uh, plosion, we remember plosive sounds. And plosive sounds are the sounds that cause the air stream to stop and then produce a kind of plosion when it is released one more time. Like what? Like when you say, Puh. that's an explosion, right? So I stopped the air and then I released it. Puh. Right, good. Also, uh, think about te. te. Also, think about d. So, d. Also think about k, k. Also think about g, g. So a, there is a complete stop of the air stream, so it doesn't come out, and then you have to release it. And when you release it, there is a plosion, explosion, right? And that's why we call these sound plosive sounds, right? So this is where the second word, which is Explosion. Stop it for God's sake. Right. Uh, this is where um, the word plosion comes from. Now let's go to the first word, which is delayed. Right. And now, um, why would we delay the pronunciation of plosive sounds? Let me tell you about this. Delayed plosion is simply about two plosive sounds meeting one another. But we're not talking about any plosive sounds. We're talking about the same plosive sounds. Like what? Like when you say red, d, 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 that's a plosive sound. And die, 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 die. So look at this, red, die. Now when they meet, you have to delay the pronunciation. Like, like it's wrong if you say red eye. Red eye is wrong pronunciation for this phrase. The correct pronunciation is to say red dye. You have to delay your pronunciation a bit. Because when you say red eye, it doesn't sound like this phrase. It actually sounds like this one. So this is what we mean by delayed plosion. And this is a very important feature of connected speech, my friends. So let's see some examples of native speakers pronouncing these two phrases. They're pronouncing red dye and pronouncing red eye. And let's see how they delay their pronunciation when the same plosive sounds are meeting each other. Let's go and watch. Let's do it. Um, <laughs> so I said, well, okay, we'll, we'll get you on a plane. Uh, it might be that you have to do the red eye. And that's what he did. So unfortunately, after here, I have to give a talk a little more. There's an event tonight in San Francisco and then the red eye. And so I'll be testifying with three hours sleep. Um, and, and so I, I would sort of never be rooted for very long anywhere. And I was actually, I took a red eye from California to, um, uh, New York on 9-11, the night of 9-11, and got to New York the morning of, and was actually in Midtown Manhattan when everything happened. Even 55, I don't, I don't know how to fully synthesize that for everybody, but I just really love the climb. I love the climb, I do. I like the red eye I took last night, like secretly. Brooklyn, now this was a mystery in the New York Times where the honey was very red, and the New York State Forensics Department came in and they actually did some science to match the red dye with that found in a maraschino cherry factory down the street. Example here, we have 
yeast that where the nu nuclear uh, pores are tagged with a red dye, and inside them you can see that little spot fluctuating around. That's where the RNA is being transcribed, and it's bouncing around because uh, the nucleus moves around in yeast. Strawberry Hill isn't made out of grapes. It's made out of strawberries. Just kidding. It's made out of apple wine, malt, red dye, and the fires of hell. So some theaters upped the ante by boiling a bug known for its red pigment. They used the cochineal bug because it creates red dye. The close behind it, 85%. China has the lowest with only 12%. The natural red dye that's used in a lot of our foods used to be made from thousands of crushed bodies of little bugs called cochineal insects. Now another example. Think about black and cart. You cannot say black cart, no. Because black art doesn't sound like this one. It actually sounds like this phrase. Black art. That's black art. But this one is black art. Black art. Let's see how native speakers pronounce these two. Let's go. So waste, it shows you the weight of the black cart, the weight of the green cart, and the so this is average per household weight and the blue cut. I mean, short run economic forecasting is, is, a, is a black art. Nobody does it very well. Now let's think about this other common example. Dark cup. You can't say dark cup because dark cup does not sound like this phrase. It actually sounds like this one. But the right way of saying this one is to say dark cup, dark cup. There has to be a delay, dark cup, but you can't say dark cup. Right. Let's see how native speakers pronounce these. Let's go. And that actually happens a lot in space. So for example, in space, everybody thinks it's really kind of dark up there, but actually it's incredibly bright. Just hanging out in the harbor, there's just such a great feel. I get a lot of inspiration from that. Mm, wonderful. I also want to put some, some dark up here. I want to do something with this up here. So I'm going to just go get some pigment. That's why. Because Revit intentionally made us think that it's a little dark up there. But do you see how you have these separations? She floats through the universe coffee hut and orders a tall, dark cup of twilight. He's like, you want to know the answer? Like, yeah. And like, you know, he leans forward and he's holding this like dark cup of tea and he leans forward. And he's like, I don't know. Now let's have another example. Big game. You can't say big game because big game sounds like this. It doesn't sound like this. Now, but in order to say this one, you say it this way. Big game. Big game. But you can't say big game. That's different. Let's see native speakers doing that. Their aim is to live and look after each other without harming the planet. It's a big aim, but they want their city to be thriving, so growing and being successful. And <clears throat> he wrote a system called Algol 68C, which is a dialect of the Algol 68 language. And his big aim, since Algol 68 was his baby, was, I can only imagine, because there's reports of these experiments going on, can I generate code on here for the Z80? And what is the best way for me to do this? And the idea behind that is trying to provide tools that photographers can use in a wide variety of situations. And ultimately, the big aim is to try and get them to match their creativity. Uh, the uh, parties to the Convention on Biological Diversity got together uh, to make this big aim for 2010, which was to uh, significant reduction, to, to, to um, achieve a significant reduction of the current rate of biodiversity loss at global, regional, and national levels. Not just an option, it needs to be a requirement if you are running a business, striving to reach your goals, or playing a big game. I just think there's a lot of things going on in the system, but I, but I really want to get people's minds more quiet because it is just one big game of, are you valuing other people's opinions or are you valuing your own process? And of course, I couldn't talk about bioregional agriculture without shouting out the original big game in town, 
Bison is a much leaner meat than beef, and it can graze on the grasses that grow naturally here. And also, if you want to say but and tie together, you say but tie, but tie. But if you say it but tie, it sounds like this one. Let's go and see how native speakers do that. Let's go. I don't know if like my booking agent and the promoters are getting better at slotting me or if audiences are evolving, but I feel like it's becoming less and less awkward. I mean, I've certainly played super awkward concerts and I've put myself in all kinds of weird situations, but I feel like you always kind of learn something from those and you get something out of it. Uh, 11 books, The Story of Civilization by Will and Ariel Durant. And I was like, a thousand pages, this is too much, right? But I see now he was giving me a hint. I didn't understand it. That there's this myth that you have to go inward to find truth. Um, we need to devote and dedicate more resources to cancer, but I think we need to do it like we did it for HIV AIDS, which is to work from the bottom up. Start with fundamental research. It is uh, absolutely true that uh, I believe pre-Brexit vote and continue to believe post-Brexit vote that um, the world benefited enormously from the United Kingdom's participation in the EU. But I also said at the time that ultimately this was a decision for the British people and the British people made that decision. Now this whole process took nearly two years but I was told that they were all working at breakneck speed. So seeing that they are real people with dynamic lives um, that often have real academic passions that don't tie into classroom work, but tie into engaged learning experiences outside the classroom. Wow. <laughs> yeah, but tie them up first and then cut them off and then you can just set the whole thing in a container and and throw it out, so. This principle applies to many of the Soviet units. During the Kurland Pocket, the Germans have two armies, but tie down six Soviet armies. Tie your camel first. There's a great saying uh, in Islam, many Muslims know this, that have faith in God, but tie your camel first. As you're engaging people in your networks, in your communities, young people across the country, explain what the American Jobs Act would do, but tie it together with these other things that are going on. Use this opportunity not just to help us get this passed, but to get organized, to get creative, and bring more people into civic engagement. So my friends, right, um, thank you so much for watching this episode of Connect Your Speech. And remember, delay plosion is so important, okay? So remember to notice this when you're speaking in English language and also when you're teaching this to your learners. Thank you so much. And again, remember, I'll be down there in the comments answering all your questions. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.